January 15, 2009 may not be immediately recognisable as a remarkable date, but the events that transpired certainly were. That was the day a US Airways A320 crash-landed in the Hudson River. Thanks to the pilot's skills and response, all 150 passengers and crew survived. The event became known as the Miracle on the Hudson. But what exactly happened that day, and how has it changed aviation and pilot training since? US Airways 1549, or Cactus 1549 according to its call sign, was scheduled to fly from LaGuardia, New York City to Charlotte, North Carolina on the afternoon of January 15, 2009. The flight was operated by an Airbus A320-214, registration November 106 Uniform Sierra, delivered new to US Airways in August 1999 and powered by two General Electric CFM-56 engines. In charge of the flights was Captain Chesley Sullenberger, well known by his nickname Solly, with First Officer Jeffrey Skiles. Both of these men had vast amounts of flying experience. A former military pilot, Captain Sullenberger had nearly 20,000 hours of flying at the time of the accident, including 4,756 hours on the A320. Jeffrey Skiles, meanwhile, was newly transferred to the type with only 37 hours on the A320, but still had accumulated over 20,000 flying hours in total during his career. The pre-flight and initial takeoff run was normal, however, early in the climb, just under 3,000 feet and around 4.5 miles from LaGuardia, the aircraft hit a flock of Canada geese, significantly obscuring the pilot's windscreen view. Almost immediately, both engines shot down, but the aircraft continued climbing for a further 19 seconds. It then entered a glide descent as the pilots responded. Captain Sullenberger took control of the aircraft and started the Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU, since Skiles had flown the takeoff, while Skiles attempted to restart the engines. 22 seconds after the bird strike, Sullenberger made a mayday call, calmly reporting, This is Cactus 1549, hit birds, we've lost thrust on both engines, we're turning back towards LaGuardia. Sullenberger initially requested to return to LaGuardia, but the pilot soon realized this was not possible and requested landing options at Teterboro Airport, just a few miles west of Manhattan in New Jersey. They were cleared for an approach to runway one, but quickly responded that they also could not make that and would end up in the Hudson. Closed-circuit television cameras and the air traffic control recording provide a clear picture of how the events unfolded demonstrating the professionalism of the controllers and aircrew. After passing over the George Washington Bridge at just 900 feet, the aircraft ditched in the Hudson at 3.31 p.m. The flight had lasted just five minutes. Such an unpowered water landing is, of course, extremely dangerous, and the success of this justifies the event later being dubbed the Miracle on the Hudson. While manufacturers and regulators have procedures for water landings, or ditching as it's known, in practice, these are rare occurrences. Passengers were evacuated onto the wings and the emergency slides. However, the evacuation was somewhat hampered by water entering the fuselage, caused by an open door at the rear of the cabin, as well as fuselage damage from landing. But by chance, this A320 aircraft was equipped for extended overwater use, meaning there was full life vest provision and the exit slides could detach to be used as rafts. The plane landed in the North River section of the Hudson, roughly in line with West 50th Street on the New York side and Wee Hawken on the New Jersey side. There were several boats close to the ditching site which headed out to assist immediately. Two New York waterway ferries were the first to arrive and immediately started taking passengers on board. Coast Guard and other ships were close behind and emergency services quickly assembled on the shore. All passengers were removed from the plane and water by 3.55 p.m., just 24 minutes after ditching. Following the crash, there was a full National Transportation Safety Board investigation. Combing through all piloting and technical aspects of the incident and ditching, it subsequently made several recommendations for improvements. It determined that the probable cause of the incident was the ingestion of large birds into each engine which resulted in an almost total loss of thrust in both engines. There were also extensive flight simulator reenactments of the flight. These focused on the possibility of returning to LaGuardia or diverting to Teterboro. 
An important issue here was pilot reaction and consideration time. Simulations with an immediate turn to an airport were partly successful, but not so when a reaction delay was added. The investigation concluded that Sollenberger's decision was correct. Starting the APU early proved vital in the later stages of the ditching, as it maintained power for all systems. Sullenberger did this immediately, whereas it was a later task in the checklist for dual engine failure. Selecting flaps 2 instead of flaps 3 was also discussed and tested. This reduced drag and allowed for a better nose altitude on hitting the water. Ultimately, several factors came together to make the ditching successful or miraculous. As well as fast and appropriate action by the pilots and good weather and clear visibility on the day, an aircraft equipped for a water landing, fast reactions from the cabin crew and the landing close to boats able to respond all contributed. As is usual following such incidents, the investigation made recommendations for further safety improvements. The NTSB report made 34 such recommendations, but some highlights include changes to bird strike testing and engine certification. Of course, the A320 and the engines are tested for bird strikes and should be able to withstand even a serious multiple bird impact. Crucial here was the size of the birds. Canada geese are large and the low speed of the aircraft. The investigation found that at least two birds had been ingested into each engine and their size had caused enough damage to prevent engine restart. Further work to develop and implement technologies on aircraft to reduce the chances of a bird strike. Introducing a checklist for dual engine failure at low altitude. The original checklist was designed for high altitude where the crew would have more time. Many parts of the checklist were not relevant or in the wrong order for the situation. Amending checklists to reflect the need to disable the ground proximity warning system on Airbus aircraft. This was left enabled in the ditching, so ground alerts overrode other alerts such as low-speed warnings. Changes to onboard safety equipment. This included the recommendation that all aircraft carry life vests and ensure adequate briefing on use regardless of route. Some internal redesign of the A318, A319, A320 and A321 to minimize the risk of certain beams intruding into the cabin. This had caused some injuries on ditching. And finally, improvement in pilot training for a dual engine failure after takeoff and ditching without power. In an unusual twist, the airframe of this particular A320 has been preserved. Typically, after accidents, the aircraft is often badly damaged with limited future for the airframe after the investigation. However, the damaged aircraft was removed from the Hudson on January 17th and transferred to Kearney, New Jersey for investigation. Following the investigation conclusion, it was put up for auction but was not purchased. Over two years later, in June 2011, it was donated to the Carolinas Aviation Museum by the American International Group or AIG. Here, it went on display along with more information about the incident and recordings of passenger and crew experiences. The water landing of US Airways 1549 remains one of the most incredible aviation stories in recent times. The pilot's quick thinking, especially over a dense metropolitan area, averted an untold tragedy, and the subsequent investigation yielded useful insight for future flight training. Where were you when you heard about Flight 1549? And what other incredible aviation stories would you like to see profiled next? Feel free to discuss your thoughts in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.